Hey friends, it's Mike. It's Tuesday, January 29th, 2019, and a little after 10.30 a.m. here on the East Coast. I want to uh, talk a little bit about a footnote that I read last night in the new version of the Memoirs of Billy Shears. The new version has the blue cover, and it is the 9 after 909 edition. And 9 after 909 means nine years after the first edition of the book, which was published back on September 9th, 2009. If you're reading the book and it has this cover, this is the Billy's Back version or the abridged version, then you are reading the older version of the book. I get asked this a lot. People ask me, Mike, which is which? If it's the red cover, it's the older version of the book. If it is the blue cover, it is the new version of the book. And I do recommend at this point in time that you read the blue covered version, the new version. And you can see that I have it tabbed and it's a slow go for me to get through this book. I know some have emailed me and PM'd me and said, Mike, I finished the book. What did you think? I said, well, you're ahead of me. I haven't gotten there yet. And the reason why is because as I go through this, I'm tabbing and each tab has a note written on it. So this is going to allow me when I do complete the book to go back and start to organize it and categorize it so that I can do a presentation on it. And I am going to do a presentation. It's probably going to be about two months out Okay, because it takes time, first of all, to, to sort through this, categorize it, and then to build the charts. It will be another PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and I'll share my thoughts and insights, and we could talk about it a little bit. Okay, I'll leave the comments open for that particular presentation when the time comes. But in any case, what caught my attention, if you want to read along, if you have your, your book handy, is uh, at the bottom of page 326, Tom has a footnote. Now, the footnote is in three paragraphs, and the second and third paragraphs is what caught my attention. So, but I'll read all three. The first paragraph of the footnote, Tom explains that digitally remastering top hits not only improved song quality, but also made the new releases more fully Williams. Yes, I have to wear readers making him largely responsible for all remastered Beatles hits recorded from September 11th, 1962, exactly four years before Paul died, and April 1st, 1970, April Fool's Day. Digitally remastering has greatly strengthened Williams' portfolio. So here's the good part. Some videos at www.jamespaulmccartney.com impressed William, but one troubled him when it said that he hates Crowley. Although William felt that Alistair lacked love for family and that some people should have mattered more, William harbors no hate for the man. William responded, there seems to be much misunderstanding about my memoirs. Let's digitally remaster it and re-release it on September 9th, 2018. We'll call it the 9 after 909 edition. The first edition gave William nine years to prepare for the next level of openness. Now, in his final stretch of life, favoring truth over diplomacy, he less cautiously buffers his Crowley connection, Illuminati affiliation, anti-religion perspective, drug use, and sexual liberation. He believes in personal freedom and intends to use his songs, these memoirs, and his interviews to encourage people to get over all of their inhibitions. Okay, so this is very Crowley-like. Uh, for those that are looking to learn more about Alistair Crowley, I highly recommend this book from Gary Lackman. I hope I'm pronouncing Gary's name correctly. It's about 330 pages or so. Uh, Gary used to play uh, with Blondie. And he has a number of books out that deal with the occult. So this book, which is Alistair Crowley, Magic, Rock and Roll, and The Wickedest Man in the World, is a great book to get a foundational understanding of Crowley. Okay, so I, I do recommend it. Now, why did I read that footnote? That footnote is because the URL that is mentioned, www.jamespaulmccartney.com, is mine. And if you type that URL into your web browser, you're going to wind up at my Paul is Dead channel, Mike Williams' Paul is Dead channel. Very interesting. So when I read this, uh, it answered some questions for me because I have been asked over time whether I believe that Bill was paying any attention to the shows that I have been doing. 
And I used to answer honestly. I would say, I, I really don't know. And I doubted it because I just figured the guy had a lot more interesting things to do at this point in his life than to sit in front of YouTube and listen to a bunch of discussion about Paul is dead and his book and so on. Yeah, I'm not trying to minimize uh, the discussions that have been had about it. I just didn't think that where he is in the pecking order that he would pay any attention to what I was putting out there. But evidently, he is. Now, what's interesting to me here, and I did write an email to Tom this morning, is that it says here that uh, some of the videos impressed William. So I'm happy about that. I was hoping it would be all of them, but I'll take some. But one troubled him when it said he hates Crowley. Now, here's the thing. I don't remember ever saying that Bill hated Crowley. What I have said is that he stated in the original memoirs, and I'm sure it's going to be in the, the new version of memoirs as well, that Crowley had a doctrine of hate. That without love, what do you have? is basically what Bill was telling us in memoirs. And I know I phrased it that way because that came off my PowerPoint chart. So when I do these shows, what I do is I have my PowerPoint presentations open on my screen so that if I'm speaking, I'm presenting, or if I'm a guest on another show, I can reference the charts for information and be able to articulate the points. So I'm not really sure where the Hates Crowley piece came from. So, as I mentioned, I did write Tom. The only thing I could think of is that uh, when I did the show with Nick Shylock, I'm wondering if something transpired there in the dialogue. Either me or Nick said something that caught Bill's attention. And what I find interesting is that is what caught Bill's attention. So it made me think that the ties between him and Crowley, and he does state here, that there are ties. Uh, I haven't gotten through the whole book yet, so I don't know if in the latter 300 pages he talks about his relationship with Crowley in any more detail. In the first part of the book, he mentions that he was uh, tutored and taught by Crowley to read backwards. Okay, so he has that connection. So whether Crowley was his father or Crowley was some other uh, person in his life that... Um, because of his bloodline that he was able to interact with, I don't know. I don't know. But of all the things that we've spoken about on the shows, that's the one that was honed in on. So I find that very, very interesting. So to me, that confirms his connection into Crowley by, by pointing that out. But that being said, it still bugs me a bit that it says that uh, it was said that he hates Crowley because I honestly do not remember or recall ever saying that. So I'll see if um, Tom emails me back. Hopefully he will email me back with the specific show and I will have to go back and take a listen to it and see what was said. But as I was reading this last night, I did not expect that to be in there. In fact, when I first read the URL, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, wait, hold on a second. That's mine. I own that domain and it points to my uh, Polis Dead YouTube channel. So I guess the question that people have been asking me on and off for the last two and a half years or so, uh, the, the question, as I mentioned before, do you think he listens to the shows? I think we can say yes, either directly or indirectly. He's paying attention and pulsing what it is that we're covering. Okay, my friends, that's it for today. I will catch up with you soon. And uh, if you have any comments, leave them down below. Have a great day.